Hello again. One of the things which one cannot help but notice about the right-wing nationalist groups which have appeared in this country since the end of the war is that while most of us can remember the names of the individuals associated with them, the names of the parties themselves are easily forgotten. For instance, I remember Colin Jordan vividly, just as I, as I do some of those connected with him, men like John Tintle and uh, Martin Webster. But I'm damned if I can remember the names of the various parties which they set up. I have a vague recollection of the British People's Party and the National Labour Party and um, Jordan's White Defence League, but I couldn't for the life of you tell you anything much about them. It is the personalities which stand out, rather than the policies of the parties or anything else much about them. I have a theory about why this should be, which I shall come to shortly. The National Front is an exception to this general rule, of course, but even there the personalities of men like John Tyndall loom large over it. He had a hand in creating the British National Party too, but really, when we think of the BNP, it's another personality we remember, Nick Griffin. Ask people about the BNP, and the fact that it was headed by Nick Griffin is the most that the average person will be able to tell you about it. All of this is a way of leading up to the split in the latest contender to be the leading right-wing nationalist group in Britain, the Patriotic Alternative. The leading lights of this group are, of course, Mark Collett and Laura Towler. And just as with the other groups I mentioned, it is the individuals who stand out rather than the policies of the party. I say party because Patriotic Alternative is still trying to be a political party, but despite the half a dozen applications to register as such with the Electoral Commission, there has not been any success yet in this endeavour. They remain a limited company rather than a political party. Whether by accident or design, their registered office is, by the way, Mosley Road. Mosley Road, there's a name to conjure with if we're thinking about right with parties. Patriotic Alternative has now, of course, itself split, and a new group has emerged, which is styling itself the Homeland Party. In the description to this video, I give links to its website and Twitter account. They're going to great lengths to make themselves seem to be a sensible and moderate party without any hotheads or political mavericks, and making quite a good job of this so far, except that they fall down badly on their slogan. This consists of just three words, family, community, homeland. When Ever I see this kind of thing, a rallying cry of a slogan in just three words like this, I'm always reminded of Germany. The Germans seem to go in for these triplets in that fashion. Family, community, homeland sounds like a cross between Kaiser Wilhelm's Kinder, Kuscher, Gertscher, or Children, Hearth and Church. The mention of homeland also puts me strongly in mind of Ein Volk, Ein Reich und Ein Führer. One people, one realm and one leader. It is this which brings me back to the fact that we seem to remember the people rather than the policies of these groups. I have a suspicion that those leading right-wing nationalist groups tend to think of themselves as the leader and that they all secretly hope that a cult of personality will spring up around them. Just as it would be impossible to imagine a Nazi party, party without Hitler, or the Italian fascist movement without Mussolini, so it is with right-wing groups in this country. The British Union of Fascists was Oswald Mosley, and it is he, he whom we remember when we hear of the pre-war black shirts. Hand on heart, how many viewers could tell me any of the economic policies of the BFU? All we remember is that powerful and determined-looking face of Mosley. 
I wonder if it might not be this desire to be a powerful, famous and recognisable person, which might possibly be what has held back right-wing nationalist parties in Britain from getting anywhere.